Another filming session, another view of Cooper laying on the couch. So today I'm here to do the second half of my August wrap up. I know it's super late, but I just don't want to miss an opportunity to talk about the books that I read because that's what this channel is all about. So in part one, you can check it out. If you haven't, I will link it up here. Um, I talked about Fame, Fate, and the First Kiss, The Escape Room, Spy Family Volume 2, Lord Olympus Volume 2, Shadows of Self, and Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun. So the first book I'm going to talk about today in this video is Earth's Daughter. I really wish I had written down who that was by. Yves Langlais, I think? Yeah, that sounds right. I didn't love this book. I ended up giving it 2.5 stars. I think it would have benefited from some more editing and actually being longer than it was because I feel like she shoved a lot into a very short book. Basically this book you're following a an earth witch. So she's a witch but she has magic that like her power comes from the earth so like if her feet are grounded in earth she has more power than if she's you know at the top of a skyscraper or something like that you know. And there are zombies appearing and she's trying to figure out like what's happening what's causing this to happen um like where they're coming from why and it's just there was just a lot <laughs> there was a lot shoved into a very short book i believe it is the first book in a series i will not be continuing because it was not my favorite it was just a lot like it wasn't the worst thing i've ever read but i'm not itching to continue the series either so that's it. It fulfilled a prompt for Magical Readathon. That was pretty much all it was. I found it by searching for like books with earth in the title to meet that prompt for Magical Readathon. So that's why I read it. Wasn't great, wasn't terrible, very middle of the road. The next book I read, however, was not middle of the road. It was fantastic. And that was Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. For some reason, every single time I try to say J.R.R. Tolkien, I, well, I really want to say George R.R. Tolkien. I have said it in videos so many times and had to edit it out, but I did it right this time. Yay! This book was fantastic. So I gave it 4.5 stars. This was like a hug in a book because I'm so familiar with this story. I've seen these movies so many times. I absolutely love them. I love this story, but I had never read the books. And every single time I asked my husband to pick a book for me to read, this was always his go-to and I just never read it. He loves this series. Everyone <laughs> I know seems to love this series. There are things in the book that they cut out of the movies. And while I can see why they cut them out of the movies, I think having them in the book, like reading through this book, it just added a little extra something. So like I was familiar with the story. I know the story backwards and forwards. It was so comfortable and yet it wasn't like it kept it very interesting for me. Not that it wouldn't have been interesting anyway because again I love the story but the little tidbits that weren't in the movies just made it a little bit like a little bit new and exciting for me to read this book. I loved it. I really did. How do you even summarize Lord of the Rings? You're following Frodo and his kind of band of misfit friends while they are trying to get rid of this ring. The one ring. It's evil. It brings nothing but trouble and this is their adventure. It's an adventure story. Um, it's a traveling story, so I guess if you don't like traveling books, you might not like Lord of the Rings, but it was just so fun. I just, I really enjoyed it, and I cannot wait to continue with the rest of the series. There's also just something to be said about going into an epic fantasy and already knowing the world and the characters. So I don't want to say like the worst part about epic fantasy, because some could argue that it's actually the best part of epic fantasy, but it's like getting to know all of the characters and the places and like they usually have crazy names and it can be a struggle sometimes and it can be a little bit of a slog so going into an epic fantasy already being familiar with the world and the characters it was such a good time okay next i had a physical tbr book it was i think a random number physical tbr book and that was nightshade by andrea kramer i ended up really liking this 
I gave it four stars, but the thing is, as soon as I finished it, I ended up finishing the trilogy. Like I read the other two books that are part of this trilogy and I gave those four stars as well. So I finished the entire trilogy in August. So that's the next three books that I'm going to talk about. Obviously I'm not really going to talk about this, the book two and three, but I will talk about this one. So in this book you're following, I don't even remember her name. It's been a while. Kala. Her name is Kala. And she is an alpha wolf, not a werewolf. So when I went into this book I thought it was about werewolves but it's not. It's just about like shifter wolves. They're actual like wolves and they are protectors and she's supposed to be marrying the son of a rival clan or like pack I guess is the right word because there are some sort of tensions but she's an alpha wolf but the alpha is not actually like in charge. There's actually someone, how many times can I say the word actually? There's someone even higher that kind of rules over the packs and tells them what they're supposed to do. They're really just guardians. They are kind of the, they're the muscle. They're the muscle behind the people in charge. It was good. Like I said, I read the rest of the trilogy and I gave the whole thing four stars. So is it new and exciting? No. Is it particularly memorable? Also, no. Notice I didn't really give you too much detail about it, but it was a good time while I was reading it. It's, I don't know, when was it published? 2010 maybe? It was that like early 2000s YA. Yeah, 2010. So it's early 2000s paranormal YA, so if you've read one you probably know how this is gonna go, but it was a good time and I enjoyed every second of it. I did. And then the last thing that I finished in August was a five star read for me, but that's not really that exciting because it was a reread. And that was Alana the First Adventure. It is the first book in the Song of the Lioness Quartet. Um, this book is so fun. I just love this series. I always say it's a middle grade series, but it also has some themes that might lean more towards young adult. So I mean, take that as you will, I guess. But these books are so fun. So in this series you're following Alana and she's a girl and all she ever wanted to be was a knight. She, that's her, the only thing she ever wanted out of life was to become a knight. But girls can't be knights. So her and her twin brother come up with a scheme where she will disguise herself as a boy and in his place she'll go to the palace and learn to be a knight and he will go to the city of the gods and become a sorcerer. So that's where this story starts and it progresses pretty quickly. It's a very condensed story so you don't get like a ton of detail about stuff like you would in a normal young adult but it also does have some like I said adult more adult or young adult themes in it so that might not be super appropriate for like a young kid. But it's just such a fun story. You're following her as she becomes a knight or works on becoming a knight at the palace and she meets all these people and it's just such a fun story. Again, very comforting for me. It's one of my favorites from when I was a kid and it's basically every reread it's an automatic five star. Are there things in it that might be red flags for some people? Probably, but for me it's just such a comforting story and I really love it. So between the two videos, those are all the books that I read in the month of August. I had tons of comfort, like comfort reads and a lot of fun books. Um, if you saw my, oh, where are you going bud? If you saw my Magical Readathon TBR, you might notice that one book is missing from my courses that I was supposed to take and that is Role Playing by Kathy Yardley. That's the one book that I did not finish in August that I had meant to. Um, I'm just gonna say I gave myself an extension. I still have not read it as of filming this video at the end of October, but I'm gonna give myself until the end of the year and I'm just gonna say I got held back. I had to do, I had to do winter school because it was the autumn equinox, so the next thing would be winter in between fall and spring. So I'm gonna say that I had to take courses over winter break. That's when I'm going to finish role playing by Kathy Yardley and I'm going to be able to progress during the next semester of Magical Readathon. 
It's a readathon. It's for fun. Judge me if you want, but I will be finishing it eventually. So that will wrap up the month of August. I know it's a little late. Thank you for sticking with me if you did. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know if you participated in Magical Readathon, how you did. And I'm just gonna wrap this up here. I will see you in the next one. Bye.